Hello everyone, welcome to What If Luffy Made Multiversal and I am crew to become the King of Pirates Part 1. Before we start please go support RAPTOR10 for writing that awesome fanfic. Now let's begin. Chapter 1, High School DXD Universe. I, you pervert. Rainer screamed, throwing a spear of light. The only one who's going to die is you. Issei yelled. A beam of light enveloped Issei's arm before it was replaced by a red metal shield, resembling the arm of a dragon. Ricocheting on it, the spear didn't any damage. What the? The fallen angel asked worriedly. Rainer Issei yelled, looking right to Rainer. You're going to pay for all the evil you've done. Boost. Don't don't get close to me. Rainer ordered, getting ready to fly and escape. I won't let you escape again. Issei assured her, running towards her. Explosion jumping on the air, Issei extended his arm, trying to grab her hand. Foreseeing this gesture, the fallen angel avoided the grab flying to the ceiling. Once there, she turned to Issei while she created the largest spear that she could make. Stop attacking me. Do you think that with your mediocrity of strength can defeat? Now, die. I told you already. The only one who's going to die Issei started to talk, targeting his arm. I. Rainer yelled, throwing her spear. It's you. Issei yelled. A red energy ball appeared on his hand and went through to Rainer's spear. Destroying the spear, the ball of fire hadn't troubled to continue its way to the fallen angel. No, 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 no. Dragon shoot. Nuo. Rainer screamed. She received the impact of the ball, screaming on pain while her body twisted in all directions. Slowly, her silhouette started to dissolve, while she whispered. I don't want to de Completely disappeared, only some few feathers, and Asia's ancient sacred gear fell to the floor. Seeing the sacred gear, Issei grabbed it and put it on the girl's lifeless body. Sorry Asia. Issei said, I couldn't save you in time. Issei, sometimes you have to believe in miracles. Rhea said to Issei, appearing from behind him. President. I think Asia has what it's needed to join my team. White. A deep white void. That's the place where Rainer was floating when she opened her eyes. Where am I not being able to move at all, she felt how her clothes were disintegrating one piece by one. Completely naked on the void, the same strange phenomenon which disintegrated her clothes, started to attack both arms and legs. It was too late to save her soul, which started to disappear as her body had done. No I I don't I don't want to die. Somebody help me. Do you want to live? A voice asked her. How well her lower abdomen disappeared, a young woman, looking more like a child with a Lolita outfit appeared. With black hair and grey eyes, she looked more like a vampire wearing hot topics clothes than a normal human being, with arrogance on her eyes. Who who are you? Rainer asked while her wings disintegrated. Do you want to live? The Lolita asked her. Huh? What kind of question is that? I'm asking you if you want to start a new life. Soon, the rest of her body disintegrated, with the exception of her head. Rainer felt that there wasn't enough time when her head started to disintegrate. Having only a few seconds, she immediately began to yell. Save me. I beg you. I'll do anything you want. The young Lolita waved her hand, and the disintegration stopped, remaining just half of Rainer's head. Waving it again, her body reconstructed, to the surprise of the fallen angel. My name is Afis. She informed her. And I need your help to make disappear the Great Red. The what? The fallen angel asked. Are you willing to help me? Office asked her, letting Rainer's body decompose again. Seeing this, the fallen angel cried out. All right. All right. I'll do whatever you want. Much better. And before Rainer could say anything, Office put her palm on Rainer's belly and surrounded the fallen angel with a shiny light, which started to burn her. Ah, it hurts. It hurts. Suddenly, Rainer stopped screaming and saw her body back to the way it was before. But what? Rainer asked when she saw that she could move again. What did you? I resurrected you partially. What do you mean with partially? You were doomed to disappear. But thanks to my magic, I was able to rebuild your body. However, from now on, my magic will leave your body slowly. When all the magic has completely disappeared, you will die forever and ever. W what wait, how long do I have to live here? From the power of your body, I'd say six months. You've only got six months to live. Unless you can do me a favor. A favor? What kind of favor? You must find the Pearl of the Dragon. The Pearl of the Dragon? An ancient artifact which can give anyone enough power to be compared with the dragons. However, it was banished from this world due to its powers. I wanted to kill the Great Red with this. Who's the Great Red? The dragon I want to get rid of. And why do you need me? Just looking at what you do to save me, I doubt that you are weaker than me. The Pearl of the Dragon isn't just in another world, but also in another dimension. Office confessed to her. If I could, I would go there myself. Nevertheless, I wasn't blessed with that power. Instead, I can just send people there. I was looking for a volunteer when I heard you were at death's door. That's the reason why I saved you. And what's my role on a trainer asked her. What do I get out of six miserable months of living for looking for your pearl before I die? 
The power of the pearl will give me powers beyond compare. Office assured her. With her, I could, as a reward, resurrect you forever. And even make you stronger than never. Suddenly interested, Rainer questioned her. Really? Of course. Already seeing herself taking revenge on Issei, Rainer got horrified when she saw Office leaving. If you're not interested, I can find someone else. Wait. Wait. The fallen angel yelled, I will cooperate. But just promise me that you will bring me back to life. I have only one thing. My word. Office assured. Then, snapping her fingers, Office wrapped Rainer in a ball of light and warned her. I know where the dragon's pearl is but I can't send you where it is. You won't survive long enough. You're too weak in the face of the enemies. Enemies? What enemies? I'm going to send you to someone who's looking for the One Piece. The treasure which contains the dragon's pearl among its riches. The One Piece? Rainer repeated when the sphere suddenly lighted up. Wait, what should I? Here's your mission, Rainer. Help Monkey D. Luffy find the One Piece. Good luck, Rainer. Office demanded, making her disappear. Fairy Tale Universe. Opening his jaws wide, Acnologia let himself float just above the island of Tenro while concentrating an enormous source of energy. The bastard wants to sink the island. Laxus warned. Everyone, prepare your defensive attacks. Urza ordered. Against this monster? It's just useless. Elfman replied. If we focus all our energies, we can do it. Marahan assured. In that case, everyone holds hands and we unleash our magic at the same time. Gray advised. Forming a circle, the wizards of fairy tale confronted Acnologia, who was ready to cast his ray. Feeling the power of the beam, a person started to tremble. Lucy asked herself, are we going to die? Suddenly feeling someone took her hand, she turned to see who took her hand. It was Natsu, who immediately cried out. You mustn't be afraid, Lucy. Natsu affirmed, with a smile. We'll go back to fairy tale, all of us, together. Natsu but before someone else could talk, Acnologia hit the island with a beam with no hesitation. Closing her eyes of the attack, Lucy couldn't see the attack, and a sudden light flashing from her keys which enveloped Lucy like some kind of protection. The attack devastated the island of Tenro, wiping it off the map of the world. Opening carefully her eyes, Lucy was surprised about the fact of not feeling pain. She looked up at the sky and saw zero traces of Acnologia, like if he has never been there. As it gone with a sigh of relief, Lucy sat down on the floor. However, she found her friends hadn't spoken or moved. Observing carefully, Lucy noticed that they were frozen. That friend's Lucy stuttered, but there wasn't any answer. Hey, hey. Lucy yelled, shaking her hand in front of Natsu's face, do you hear me? What's the matter with you? Lucy asked, shaking some of her friends before slapping some others. Talk to me. Still nothing. Like statues, her friends got frozen for all eternity. Walking backward before that you, Lucy fell on her ass, before ask. Did Acnologia do this? No, it was me. At that moment, Lucy saw the silhouette of a little girl behind her. WHWH who are you? Sorry if I scared you. My name is Mavis Vermilion, the founder of Fairy Tale. The what? If it makes you feel any better, I'm just a spirit. That's even worse. Lucy freaked out. Finally getting up, she pointed at her friends. Why are they like that? When Acnologia tried to destroy you, I cast a spell to protect each one of you. However, this monster devastated the island before I could finish the spell. For that reason, we are now in another dimension. What? You're kidding, right? To prove it, Mavis suddenly turned her hand, making that both her and Lucy floated on the air. What the? Not having time to finish, Lucy saw sent to the sky. When Lucy opened her eyes, she saw a strange sight. There was nothing there. Beyond the island of Tenro, there was an infinite expanse of blue as far as the eye could see. In fact, the island was floating. But but, where are we? In another dimension, Mavis replied. Unfortunately, that wasn't written to happen, just as your friend's immobility wasn't. Ah uh, but in that case, why am I not frozen too? Your spirit saved you? Mavis revealed to Lucy. In an effort to save you, they were able to transport you into the spirit world for a short amount of time and then put you back here. Thanks to that, you avoided the worst. But what about my friends? Can you do something for them? Unfortunately I can't. Mavis confessed, lowering her gaze. They're doomed to stay that way for all the eternity. Listening to this, Lucy fell over her knees and hit the ground with her fist, crying. Why? Why? If only if only I could have defeated that bastard dragon, they, but there could be a way to save them. Huh? Said Lucy, turning her gaze to her how. The fairy sphere should be able to fix it, the what? One of fairy tales sacred relics and a mighty weapon. Being by far the most powerful of the weapons, it was decided that it couldn't fall at the hands of evil wizards. If I had the fairy sphere in my possession, I could free your friends and send you back home. Is it is it true? And where is the sphere? Far away from here, being part of a legendary treasure. The one piece. The what? The treasure which is located on another dimension. 
By the fact of being impossible to find, the legends say that the fairy's fear is placed with it. Treasure from another dimension, but how am I supposed to find it out? I can take you to that dimension, as well as find one who can lead you to him. It's a guy named Monkey D. Luffy, a man whose dream is to become the King of Pirates. King of Pirates. Yes. In my opinion, he has all the needed to find the One Piece and else. Help him and you'll find the fairy's fear. Wait. Aren't you coming with me? Right now, it is impossible for me to leave the island. If I leave this dimension, your friends will disappear and I don't know what could happen to them. Mavis said. You are their only hope. Are you ready to help them? Observing at the frozen bodies of her friends, Lucy finally got up and said. If I'm the only one who can save them, of course, I am. Where is him and how will I recognize him? All I can tell you is that he wears a straw hat on his head. But don't worry, I'll try to move you as close to him as I can. Are you ready? Yes. Lucy answered her immediately. Mavis smiled seeing Lucy's eyes overflowing with confidence, in spite of the strange mission that had just been commanded to her, and said. You deserve your place at Fairy Tale. Mavis turned Lucy's body into a multitude of particles of light, going straight up to the sky. Good luck Lucy. Chapter 2. So do you think Kobe's got an ally? Alveda asked, trying to understand it after her men came to bring the news. Yes. He came out of a barrel and left with Kobe as soon as you got here. One of the men answered. This guy must have been a bounty hunter. That little idiot. Wouldn't he have realized by now that even a dozen people couldn't do anything against me? Suddenly, twirling her club, like if it weighed almost nothing, she ends up crushing it on the ground with all her might. The impact of the blow was so powerful that vibrations made some of her men move back. Go after them. Alvida ordered. Do whatever you want with a bounty hunter. Nevertheless, bring Kobe back alive. I'll take care of him personally. At your command, Alvida Sama. Her men cried before running at once towards the forest. But as soon as they had taken a step in the forest, one of them suddenly stopped. Alvida Sama, look. He cried, pointing to the sky. Hmm? The fat woman groaned, raising her head. Her eyes suddenly widened as she saw two luminous shapes in the sky, falling towards them, like shooting stars. What? Not having time to say anything else, she saw how those luminous shapes crashed into the forest that covered the small island. Feeling the ground vibrating beneath their feet, most of her men lost their balance. But but what was that? A man asked, not waiting that someone answered, but exposing the thought that everyone had. Cannon fire. Impossible. It was more like two meteorites. Thinking of another possibility, Alvida finally declared, Kobe decides to be a rebel, he finds an ally, and now this island is bombarded by unknown objects, the same day. What do you think all this has to do with anything? Maybe. She mumbled, putting her club on her shoulder. In any case, we'd better go and have a closer look. Covered with a layer of earth, Kobe eventually straightens up. Coughing, he began to rub his eyes to remove the sand that was there. Uh, but what happened Kobe yelled, groping the floor to find his glasses. When finally he found his glasses and put them right in front of his eyes, he looked at the location of his boat or, at least, what was left of it. Instead of the boy's boat, there was only a crater in front of him, at least 10 meters in diameter. What the heck happened? Having taken refuge at the top of a tree, Luffy suddenly lands next to him. Incredible what was that? Luffy asked, seeing the crater. No idea. The boy confessed to him. But we'd better not get too close. It could be he didn't even finish talking when he saw Luffy running towards the crater. It's like talking to a wall. Kobe sighed, following him too unwillingly. Standing in front of the crater, Luffy stretched his neck to see the bottom of the hole, hidden by the dust and smoke which was taking a long time to fall. What do you think we'll find? Kobe frightened himself while he approached cautiously. From what we've seen, that would be two asteroids. Nevertheless, it is very strange that they fell at the same time, in the same place. I don't know, but I'm sure we'll find something cool. At that point, the dust fell enough to allow them to see the source of all this. And what a surprise when Kobe and Luffy saw two women lying at the bottom of the crater. One with black hair and the other with blonde hair. But what are they doing here? Jumping into the hole, Luffy slid to the bottom of it. Then crouching over the two girls, he shook the one with blonde hair. Hey, are you okay? Luffy asked, shaking the girl with blonde hair with his patented fineness. Of course not. Kobe cried out, joining him. How can they be alright when they just fell from the sky? It would be a miracle if they were still alive. He then grabbed the black-haired girl's wrist and began to feel her pulse. At first, the boy was shaking so much anxiety that he felt nothing. Seeing him do it, Luffy wanted to know. Well, are they alive or aren't they? Luffy asked. I don't know. I can't feel his pulse. Kobe answered, yelling due to the anxiety of the situation. You're useless. Hey. Suddenly, Kobe felt a faint flick on her hand. Surprised, he let himself fall to the ground while the girl opened her eyes. Straightening up, she looked at Kobe with pure hatred and rage in her eyes. How dare you to touch me, you miserable human. 
At that moment, Kobe was so surprised to see her rise, he barely listened. Instead, he left to escape a breath of relief. Thank God I thought you were dead Kobe said, tranquilizing himself a bit. Ed the woman wondered. Why would I be dead? Suddenly images of her death popped into her head, as she could hear the voice of a spirit. Here's your mission, Rainer help Monkey D. Luffy to find the One Piece good luck, Rainer, is say. Rainer suddenly cried out, yelling with all the rage that a throat could project. Rhea's Gremory Orphis. See calm down. Kobe advised her, trying to tranquilize her you, but Kobe couldn't continue when he watched how Luffy punched on the top of Rainer's skull, knocking her unconscious. No, but what's wrong with your head? The child asked him, trying to understand how his mind works. What? The pirate wondered. Grandpa used to do the same thing with me when I was a kid it said that hitting a headache makes it go away. They're crazy. You little Rainer then squeaked, putting her hands on her head, who are you to dare to hit me? I'm Luffy the man replied. Shock and surprise were now painted and written on Rainer's face at the moment she heard that name. Luffy? Wouldn't that be? Then, grimacing, Lucy ends up opening her eyes. Where where am I? Are you alright? Kobe asked, helping her to get up. Oh yes, I guess. She agreed, looking around her. But where are we? Suddenly, memories came back to her mind. Lucy opened her eyes and cried out. Are we on the island of Tenro? Tenro? Kobe repeated. Uh, no. Actually, I've never heard of that island. Is that where you live? Luffy asked her. No, actually, I. Are you Monkey D. Luffy? Rainer suddenly asked him. What? Luffy said. Do you know me? Monkey D. Lucy wondered, repeating the words of Senior Chief to herself. You're the man who wants to become the King of the Pirates. Passing his finger under his nose, he then approved, somewhat vainly. Yeah, it's me. Except I don't want to become the King of the Pirates. I'll be the King of the Pirates. At least, once I find the One Piece. I can't believe it. The two girls thought at the same time. I was sent right where he was. But Kobe cried out, looking to Luffy. Are you looking for the One Piece? But that's impossible. Why? The pirate asked him. Because it isn't even sure if this treasure exists. And even if it does, don't forget it's on the other side of the world, at the end of the Grand Line. The most dangerous sea in the world. Few people can get there and come back to tell what they've been through. And even fewer go there to hope to get their hands on the One Piece. Grand Line? Lucy repeated. Could you tell me exactly what it is and where it is? Huh? Kobe was surprised. Are you kidding? You don't know what Grand Line is, do you? I just want to know is where the One Piece is. Rainer yelled. Then standing in front of Kobe, she asked with a stern look on his face. And well. What it is and where it is. Uh, no idea. Kobe confessed. Huh? Rainer mumbled, hardening her gaze and making the boy started to sweat cold sweats. The One Piece is a legendary treasure. He finally gave up. It is said that all the treasures that the former pirate King Gold D. Roger managed to collect before he was executed are there. Nevertheless, since his death, nobody has been able to find it in 20 years. What? Rainer got mad, grabbing Kobe by the collar, are you kidding me, I need to find it to come back to life. Come back to life? Luffy and Kobe asked completely confused. You too? Lucy wondered. You were sent here too. Rainer mumbled, observing to Lucy carefully. Did Orpha send you, who is she? I'm here to find the fairy's fear. Lucy answered. What's that? All I want to do is get my hands on the dragon's peril. Oh, uh, what are you talking about? Luffy and Kobe asked, waiting for some kind of answer, as a question mark appeared over their heads. Then, Luffy looked at Lucy. Who are you, anyway? If you're Monkey D. Luffy, then I was sent here to help you. Lucy revealed. To help me? Yes, I'm Lucy Hurtfilia. She introduced herself. I'm a fairy tale wizard. Wizard? Kobe asked, not believing the fact of being a wizard. Fairy tale? Luffy asked. Remembering Mavis's words, Lucy started to explain. I come from another world where people can use magic. Those who can use, it can work in places called guilds. My own guild is called Fairy Tale. Then, her look became bitter before continuing. But due to a dragon attack, my friends were attacked and froze. With the help of a spirit, I managed to get out of it. But to help my friends, I have to find the one piece to get my hands on Fairy's fear. According to the one who saved me, this fear would allow her to save my friends. Magic Luffy repeated and began to get excited. Do you really know how to do magic? That wasn't the part that needed the most attention. Kobe replied. You're saying it was a spirit that saved you and sent you here? That's insane. In that case, is that why you know Luffy? In name only. She explained. For his looks, Mavis only told me he had a straw hat. And why did she tell you about me? Luffy asked. Because she told me you've everything to find the one piece. She said. Nevertheless, it's only if I can help you. What about you? Kobe asked, looking to Rainer. Are you a magician too? The FFF Rainer laughed arrogantly. Who do you think I am? 
I am superior to each one of you. And do you know why suddenly taking on her true appearance, she brought out her raven wings on her back as her outfit changed. However, instead of her leather outfit, clothes with a lot of cute kitten faces appeared. But what? She yelled confused and blushing with shame. Orphis. What have you done to my clothes? Not paying attention to them, Kobe suddenly fell backward before shouting. But are you what? And an angel used to this kind of reaction, Rainer only grunted. However, she couldn't hide her surprise when she noticed Lucy's stoic attitude, who was hardly astonished by the black wings and, above all, by the fact that stars appeared in Luffy's eyes. So cool. He exclaimed as he began to turn around her, are those real wings? Can you fly with those? That's so cool. How did we get them? Huh? Rainer mumbled, seeing that he was far from being afraid of her true appearance. Besides, you've changed your shape. The pirate remarked. Well, not much, but you've changed. Teach me how to do it. Believing that Luffy was insulting her, Rainer immediately replied. Who do you think you are? If you haven't noticed, I'm a fallen angel and you're just a human. It's obvious you could never have powers like mine. The fallen angel Lucy and Kobe repeated the question. How is that possible? You're really stupid. She sighed. It is obvious, however, that when you see me, it is obvious that the existence of God is true. God exists. Kobe asked, not waiting to discover that answer to the question which opened different wings of philosophy. Yes. At least, in my world. She proudly showed her hand and said. And, as you can see, I am a white lighter. Leaning his head to the side, Luffy asked. Didn't a fallen angel do evil deeds? Shut up Rainer ordered him at once. Do you think you're smart enough to judge me, uh? Not really. The pirate answered while he started to smile at her. I would even say that I find you interesting. Interesting? The fallen angel asked confused. Uh, if I heard correctly, you mentioned resurrection. Lucy remarked, yet it seems to me that you are very alive. It's only a temporary effect. Rainer growled. Not long ago, I was killed by a demon. However, instead of dying for eternity, a person appeared and resurrected me partially in exchange for a favor. In order to resurrect completely, I must find the Pearl of the Dragon, a pearl with immense powers which it is located in the same place as the One Piece. The Pearl of the Dragon? Kobe repeated. What the heck is that again? Whatever. The fallen angel ignored to Kobe, turning to Luffy. I admit I'm not happy about teaming up with you. However, I know nothing of this world, and the access to this famous One Piece seems complicated. So I propose you to work for me in order to have a chance to succeed. Hey, no way. I'm the captain. Luffy answered. Huh? Don't you understand your weakness yet, you miserable human? Rainer threatened arrogantly. I warn you, I'm going to punch you in the face. Luffy threatened, not even having a shadow of fear for the fallen angel. That's it. Like if a tiny human like you could even touch me. Seeing them fight, Kobe preferred to make his presence as invisible as possible, while Lucy had the impression about be seeing Grey and Natsu arguing. Finally, she asked Kobe. What about you? Who are you, anyway? A pirate. Oh, my name is Kobe. The boy answered, revealing his name. And, actually, I'm more like another pirate captain's lackey. But my dream is to be in the Navy. The Navy? Suddenly, gaining in confidence, Kobe said yes, my dream is to join the ranks of justice to capture all pirates who commit crimes. However suddenly losing his confidence, he ends up mumbling. I know that I am weak and useless. Even if I could be in the Marines, I'm sure I could barely become a toilet cleaner. Suddenly he felt Lucy's hand caressing his skull in a comforting gesture. You don't have to be so insecure. To tell the truth, not so long ago I considered myself a weak person compared to my friends at Fairy Tale. However, I haven't given up yet. By persevering and practicing, I've finally improved my magic skills. Did you do this to become the strongest member of your team? No. Lucy replied. I did it to become someone my friends could count on in case of danger. I didn't want to be a burden for them. And though I was afraid of everything, I never wanted to run away. Yes, I wanted to become strong so that I could fight by their side. Hearing this, Kobe's eyes marveled as he clenched his fists. Yes, you're right. I mustn't go on like this and constantly say to myself that I am weak. I must become a person that everyone can count on. Yes, one day I will capture pirates, like Alveda. What do you say, brat? A voice roared behind his back. Suddenly, crashing to the ground, a huge club appeared between Lucy and Kobe, narrowly failed to squash them. But what? Lucy wondered. Alveda Sama. Kobe yelled, frightened. Now standing in front of them, the huge pirate, with a smile on her face, affirmed. Finally, I found you, you little kid and as I could see, I wasn't mistaken about think that you wanted to betray us. Alveda said. So, you want to join the marines? And capture me on top of that? Haha, <laughs> let me laugh. It's not like a little insect like you could. She suddenly stopped when she saw Luffy banging his forehead against Rainer's while the two were still arguing about becoming the team leader. 
I'll be the captain. Luffy said. And the pirate king too. You? A king. Don't make me laugh. You are only a mortal who thinks that has the right to speak to me. Don't give yourself airs of royalty. Hearing them and realizing that they didn't know, Alveda suddenly roared. Hey, this case is about you, too, don't be uninterested in my presence. Turning at once to her, Luffy and Rainer immediately ordered her. Shut up, big whale. Kobe and the rest of Alveda's crew opened their mouths wide, while the color on their faces turned white, knowing what was going to happen. Veins appeared in Alveda's forehead and tightened her grip on the handle of her club, to the point of creating cracks. Finally, she ordered. Kill them. All of them. Wielding their swords, several of her men ran towards Luffy and Rainer. One of them, faster than the others, raised their weapon above their head and lowered it towards Luffy. Die. Unimpressed, the pirate clenched his fist and sent it with all his strength towards the pirate's face. Feeling his jaw cracking, the man was propelled backward as Luffy's arm lengthened. Assing between his friends, the pirate's body continued its way until it crashed into a tree. The rest of the crew watched in amazement how Luffy's arm returned to normal. Luffy, once his arm went back, ran and stretched his leg out. Um gum whip now resembling a whip, his leg whipped the pirates hard and threw them off. Then he stretched some survivors, with Kobe and Lucy observing on another side, yelled surprised by the unknown ability of the pirate. The devil fruit Alveda mumbled, knowing what could do something like that. What? Did this guy eat a devil fruit? Of her men asked completely scared while they looked Luffy. Suddenly, the man who asked turned his head around when he noticed a little detail. There was a person missing. Hey, where's the dark-haired girl? She's here. A man cried, pointing to the sky. How the pirate mumbled, raising his head. He widened his eyes and saw Rainer, flying through the air, while light spears were forming around her. Bet it in your faces. Rainer laughed when she started throwing the projectiles at them. The pirates zigzagged as best as they could do to avoid the spears that pierced the ground around them. What the hell are those monsters everyone yelled at the same time. We must take Kobe and the other woman hostage. Someone decided, looking to them. It was at that moment that several of his friends found themselves in the air when a phenomenal force pushed them back. Out of nowhere, a huge cow appeared with an axe in his hands, fighting them off and repelling them with no difficulty. The bull what the hell is it doing here? Taurus, I'm counting on you to take them all down. Lucy requested to Taurus with the key in her hand. Not a problem, Moo Taurus answered, protecting both Lucy and Kobe. But how the child tried to ask, but getting distracted with the view. Alveda's crew, being knocked down, one by one. How dare you stand up to me? Alveda asked angrily to the trio of fighters. Do you really want to get killed so badly? I'm not afraid of you. Luffy replied. A big whale with only physical strength as a weapon has no chance of beating me. Rainer assured her. There is no honor on running away from the enemy. Lucy said. Silently, Kobe couldn't help but admire their strength and courage as they faced Alveda, without the slightest shadow fear. They have courage. Suddenly, repeating Lucy's words to himself, he suddenly cried out. Alveda, I'm not scared of you. Huh? Alveda looked at him. Gathering all his courage, Kobe shouted. I'm leaving and I'm going to join the marines. And I'm going to spend the rest of my life beating pirates. And do you what? A monkfish pirate like you doesn't deserve to be free. Luffy laughed hearing Kobe, while Lucy smiled at him, seeing that her words had the desired effect. Monkfish Mir add with anger, Alveda looked right to Kobe and threw her club in his direction. Since you insist, you'll be the first to be crushed onto the ground, you little runt. But, suddenly, the blade of Taurus's axe struck her club and managed to cut it in half. What? Alveda yelled, and then, two spears stood in front of her and pierced both her feet, causing her to let out a cry of pain. You Alveda began, giving Lucy and Rainer a black look. Kobe won't be your lackey anymore. Luffy assured her, walking towards her. Do you know why? Because he's going to join the marines. And you're going to be in the sky in a few seconds. And to prove it, he twirled his arm above him to increase the speed and power of his next punch. No, stop. Alveda begged him, trying to back off. But blocked by Rainer's spears and unable to defend herself without her club, the pirate found herself at the mercy of the slightest attack. Um gum pistol Luffy's fist, at an incredible speed, managed to hit her right in the stomach and even managed to lift her feet off the ground, despite Rainer's spears. Propelled with that force, Alveda found herself flying in the sky, disappeared in no time. When Kobe saw her disappear, he suddenly fell to his knees before tears began to sting his eyes. I am free. Raising his arms in the air, Kobe yelled. I am free. Alveda's crew, who had watched her being beaten so easily, began to tremble and quietly tiptoed away. But stopped by a spear of light, they saw Rainer standing in front of them, with a sadistic smile on her face. Oh, you're going to run out on us that fast, what a pity. She licked her lips and created another spear of light before she cried out. I wanted a bloodbath. Preparing to throw the spear at them, she suddenly was stopped by Lucy, who grabbed her arm. Hey, what's the matter with you? What? 
The fallen angel asked, annoyed by the blocking. What's the problem if I kill them? There's nothing good on letting you kill people who have been defeated. Killing them won't do you anything good. Right, Luffy. Hearing them, without reacting, Luffy ends up putting his hat back on his head correctly, before casting a serious glance at the pirates of Alveda. Hobie wants to go to sea and join the marines. Give us a boat or there'll be trouble. Yes sir. The pirates exclaimed, rushing immediately to their base to bring a ship. Seeing them escape, Raynor made her spear disappear and mumbled. It's not funny. What a bunch of suddenly she got quiet when, suddenly, Lucy kneeled before Luffy and started to beg him. Monkey D. Luffy, I know we've only just met for a few minutes, but I'm begging you. Take me with you. I want to save my friends. If you want, I'll do your every command, no matter what. I beg you. Let me be your ally. Luffy, looking under his hat, finally declares. No way. Lucy's eyes widened as she heard his answer. Tears came to her eyes as she couldn't hide her despair. But, Luffy Kobe began. I don't want to make just an alliance. Luffy denied with a head. No, I'll let you come with me if you join my crew. Huh? Lucy said, raising her head. Become the first member of my crew. Luffy, with his patented smile, offered his hand. If your goal is to save your friends, then I would gladly help you. And then. Then his eyes sparkled before he asked. You'll tell me how you made your cow appear. It was so cool. It sits my magic. Lucy said to him. My magic is liked with the constellations, allowing me to summon spirits like Taurus. I can make a dozen of them appear. Awesome Luffy exclaimed, starting to get excited. He cried out. Yes, I really want you to be part of my crew. Then it's a deal. I I. Lucy began. I can't accept. I'm from Fairy Tail. If I leave the guild to become a pirate for the rest of my life, it'll be considered treason for my part. I didn't demand you to leave your friends, Luffy said. But Lucy asked as she saw him smile. Join my crew until we find the One Piece once we do, I'll let you go home with your friends. So, do you agree? Luffy saw Lucy put her hand in front of her mouth while tears ran down her cheeks. Finally, she finally shook his hand and talked. Thank you. Thank you very much, Captain. Seeing them without saying anything, Raynor finally looked away. She won't be begging Luffy to accept her as one of them. Remembering what she had said, Luffy walked towards her. If you think I'm going to beg, you're nuts. She warned him. You don't have to beg. Luffy replied. Since I already want you in my crew, you should be in my crew. What? Raynor said. Your powers are so cool too. And you're an angel, too. Yeah, I want my crew filled with people as interesting as you are. When Raynor heard him talking to her like that, she suddenly cried out. What of you where supposedly it has located your brain? Haven't you understood that I'm a fallen angel? How can you talk to me like that? Aren't you afraid of me? Why should I be afraid? Luffy asked her. After all, I ate the gum gum fruit. To prove it, he stretched his cheek until it was three feet long. What kind of fruit can do that? The fallen angel and Lucy asked at the same time. The devil fruits. Those are fruits that give powers to those who can eat them. Kobe explained to them. But the fruits are cursed by the sea. So, those who eat one, won't be able to swim anymore. Yeah, now I'm an anchor. Luffy laughed. Nevertheless, thanks to this I can do a lot of really cool stuff. So, you're some kind of demon. Raynor said, angrily. No. I don't have wings like you. Luffy replied. It's a shame, I always wanted to fly. Tempting him, Luffy made a new proposal to Raynor. Well. Will you join my crew too? I wouldn't take a no. Hey, it's my call. Raynor replied. Nevertheless, looking to his side, she ended up shaking Luffy's hand lightly. But I'm not teaming up with you because I want to. I'm teaming up with you because I need you to guide me to the One Piece. And at the end of the trip, I leave the crew too. No problem. Luffy assured her. Then suddenly he started jumping around, smiling more and more. Great. I've barely begun my adventure, and I've already recruited two great members. That's just great. When Lucy saw him behave like that, she started smiling back. I'm feeling nostalgic. What do you mean? Kobe asked her. When I look at Luffy, I feel like I'm looking at one of my precious friends. When I see him like that, I feel like I'm reliving my meeting with Natsu. Suddenly, the pirates of Alveda reappeared carrying a small boat that could hold a few people on board. That's it. A beautiful boat, brand new. That nutshell. Raynor asked, observing the boat. You don't have to get a biggest. Kobe replied. If you and Lucy can't sail, it will be hard for Luffy to do it properly on a real ship. I don't know how to sail either. Luffy replied, keep smiling. Huh? Kobe mumbled confused and surprised, but which direction were you going before you got here? No idea. I was letting the good luck choose. While Raynor slapped her forehead, already regretting teaming up with him, Lucy couldn't help but laugh, seeing that Luffy was really Natsu's alter ego in this dimension. Well, let's forget it. Raynor sighed. Walking right to Alveda's men, her smile reappeared before declaring. 
Thank you for giving us this boat as a gift. Nevertheless, you must understand that from now on we are pirates, ha. Uh, made the men. And then. It seems simple to me. The fallen angel said before to make a pure spear. Then, she commanded. Give us all your treasures and the food you have. And quickly. Yes sir. You too, drop it. Lucy ordered. No way. Luffy and Rainer replied, holding a bag of food for the former and a bag of jewels for the latter. When the four had already boarded the ship, Alvita's men had brought, as Rainer had demanded, their treasure and food. However, the boat was too small to hold everything, so only a bag of food and another of coins could be taken. The rest had to be left for the pirates. But the food we already have, we can last five days. Kobe said. And considering its weight, I think the money bag has at least a million berries on it. There's no need to take more. With the slightest wave, we could capsize. The FFF, not even funny. The two pirates mumbled, finally dropping the rest of their plunder at the feet of the pirates of Alveda. The pirates pushed the ship and watched them sail away. Uh, what do we do now? A man asked the rest of the crew. I don't know. Another confessed, usually Alveda decided everything. Yeah, but, you know now that she's gone, we're not going to get hit anymore, right? And with the treasures we have, we could live a little without that big whale falling on us. Reflecting on this, the pirates finally smiled and said. Come on, this calls for a toast. Chapter 3. You two are you going to keep sulking Lucy's side, seeing Luffy and the fallen angel sulking in their corners? Shut up retorted the fallen angel. I would never get along with humans. She has a bad temper. Lucy noticed with a sweat drop. Wanting to relax the atmosphere, she dug into the bag of food and took out an apple. Luffy, do you want an apple? Lucy offered him. Ooh, Luffy's expression turns glad as he snatches the apple. Thank you Luigi. It's Lucy. She comically cried. Sighing, she ended up sitting next to Kobe, who held the helm. Please, Kobe, don't you want to stay with us, Lucy begged. Out of all of us, you're the only one who's normal here. What the hell do you mean Rainer comically snapped? Before the situation escalates, Kobe suddenly teaches them. In no time, we will be in Shell's town, Kobe said. There is a Marine's base over there. Shell's town. Repeated Luffy, after he finished his fruit. It's weird. I have the impression that Makino had told me about this island just before I left. That's where Arano's aura was captured. Kobe exclaimed. Who is he a pirate? Lucy asked. No, Rurano is famous for being a bounty hunter. Kobe answered. A man who captures pirates to get rewards. This man is also well known for being strong and having no mercy. His nickname is the Demon. If I understand well, your world, excluding civilians, is made up of three major groups. Pirates, the Navy, and Bounty Hunters. Rayner noted. In comparison, pirates would, therefore, be demons, the Navy would be God, as well as its angels, and the Bounty Hunters would be the Fallen Angels. Grinning grimly, she said. I really want to see this fallen angel from your world. What? Kobe blurted out panicking. You want to meet Zoro that's insane it is said that he is the strongest swordsman in all the East Blue and even one of the five strongest people in the sea. One of the strongest people in East Blue? Repeated Luffy, with sparkling eyes. I wonder if he would like to join my crew. Are you crazy Kobe cried. Why would you want someone like him in your crew? You said it yourself, the Grand Line is dangerous, Luffy said. To survive on the sea, I must, therefore, assemble a very strong crew. It makes sense, Rainer nodded. Surprising coming from this stupid human. Don't confuse strategy and stupidity. Kobe retorted. You know, you should never judge people on mere rumors, Lucy said to Kobe. Maybe he is nicer than we thought. That would surprise me a lot, Kobe said. They gave a lot of warnings about him to the newspaper. Great. It looks really interesting to me. Said Luffy. Raising his fists in the air, he exclaimed. I would make him the third member of the crew, it's a fairly small island. Luffy noticed as he left the boat. Standing in front of them, he could indeed see shells down, as well as the only town it contained, in its entirety. At first glance, there are barely 40 houses. Lucy noticed. As for her gaze, towards the top of the island, Rainer noticed. The building, at the top, is almost half of all the other homes combined, in size. Following her gaze, Kobe said. Yes. It's the navy building. Its large size can deter many pirates from attacking this island. In this case, it is better to be very discreet, Lucy nodded. Still, I'm glad that we don't have a real pirate ship. Come on, let's see if there is a restaurant here. Luffy said eagerly. He dashed towards the town. Quickly reaching the city, the three companions saw their captain paying several pairs. Crunching in one of them, he began to rave about it, noting that it was very juicy. Man, that was tasty. Luffy happily announced. Decidedly, almost everything makes him happy. Rainer muttered. I don't think we can consider this as a defect. Kobe replied. Isn't it Lucy? He then fell silent, seeing the darkened look of the blonde. Are you okay, Lucy? Not really, Lucy replied sadly. It's just that seeing a city reminds me a bit of my home. 
and with Luffy, who looks like two drops of water to Natsu, in terms of behavior, I can't stop thinking about my friend. She stopped and shook her head, no, I shouldn't be moping around like this. I know what to do to cheer me up. She took out one of her silver keys from her pocket. Open gate of the dog, Plu. Immediately, a bright flash flooded part of the alley, while a small white ball appeared in front of Lucy. What Rainer asked, blinded by the light. She's summoning a spirit. Kobe announced. So cool. Cried Luffy, immediately rushing towards them to see the spirit in question. However, his excitement vanished when the white ball showed only a pair of arms and legs and a round head with a sort of carrot as a nose. The whole thing formed the fusion between a puppy and a snowman, who kept shivering. Flu? He cried, greeting the pirate. What is that thing? Luffy bluntly asked, drooling. Is it edible? Hands off cried Lucy, kicking Luffy in the face. Uh sorry it missed, Kobe bowed. He is not at all missed. Retorted Lucy. She hugged Plu against her, can't you see he's adorable like that? What do you think Ray? She paused, seeing the fallen angel start to blush, seeing Plu. Even though she was trying to stay the same, it was clear that she found the spirit cute and that she wanted to hug him. Noticing this, Lucy immediately handed her the little white being so that she could take it. Here you can hug him if you want. Lucy offered. Rainer hesitated for a moment. However, she finally turned her gaze to the side. PFFF. Who do you take me for? Only a kid would behave like this. As you wish, Lucy sighed with a sweat dropped. Uh, I don't think it was a smart idea to use your magic here, Kobe suddenly noticed, turning his gaze around. Indeed, all around the four companions, several people had stopped, seeing what Lucy had just created. But what asked someone? What just happened? What was this light? Oh right, you guys don't have magic here, Lucy realized. In that case, avoid doing magic around towns, Rainer advised her, rushing a little further. It would even be better if neither of you divulged your identity to anyone, Kobe suggested. In the future, to explain your powers, you only have to say that you have eaten a devil fruit. As long as it keeps us out of trouble, that's fine with me. Rainer agreed. Say, where to go to find Zoro? Wanted to know Luffy. What? You haven't given up on recruiting him? Kobe was frightened. If the Navy captured him, he must be in their building, Lucy said. Don't help him. Cried the child. Anyway, he will not change his mind. Noticed the blonde. So as much as he sees it so that he knows what he looks like. We will see you then. It was thus that the four comrades found themselves in front of the enormous portal and the wall which surrounded the naval vessel. The portal, measuring four meters high, seemed to want to let no one pass. Well, it looks very secure. Noticed Lucy, who was still hugging Plu in her arms. Even too much. Rainer informed her, noticing the presence of a sign hanging on the fence. You are currently standing in front of the base of the 153rd Navy Army. If you are only a civilian, it is in your interest to turn around in case of intrusion on your part, you would expose yourself to large sentences. It really makes you want to go and ask for help. Quipped Lucy. Are you really sure, Kobe, of wanting to register here? Of course. Assured the boy. I know very well this naval base. It is the one that is led by Colonel Morgan. He is a man feared by all the pirates of East Blue with him as superior, I am convinced that I could quickly. Hey, you what are you doing here? Suddenly opening the gate, three people stood in front of the quartet. One step forward, a man said. I am Sergeant Eraser did something happen in town. No not at all said Lucy, while Rainer clapped her hands over Luffy's mouth to keep him from saying anything. We just came here so Kobe can integrate your base. Integrate our base? Wondered the man. Inhaling for a long time, Kobe ends up taking his courage to exclaim. Yes, that's it my name is Kobe, and I wholeheartedly wish to join this base in order to become a soldier. Lancing at him briefly, Eraser turns around before advising him. Go home, kid this place is not a nursery. But I Kobe started. You didn't understand cried Eraser. Clear the floor as quickly as possible. A insect like you would be a week for the navy. So, get off. Hey, what's wrong with you? Wanted to know Lucy, not much appreciative of the man's behavior. And you too, get off. Eraser ordered them. Don't stay here. Watching them carefully, he finally noticed. An instant you are not even inhabitants of this island. And then wanted to know Rainer. Suddenly taking his gun, Eraser aims them, quickly imitated by his men. In this case, get out of this island. Leave as soon as possible. Suddenly taking the collar of his shirt, Luffy exclaimed. Are you looking for us or what? I forbid you to destroy Kobe's dream. Hear you. If he integrates this base, his dream will be completely ruined. Replied Eraser. Above all, he must not be under the orders of Colonel Morgan. I said the pirate. It's good, Luffy. Kobe said suddenly, turning around. No need to insist. Hobie called him Lucy, seeing him go. You must not give up so quickly. Nevertheless, she stopped encouraging him as soon as the boy turned to her. Restraining himself as best he could the boy tried to smile while tears pecked his eyes. Before I even arrived here, I was certain that I had been under the illusions from the start. 
a coward like me in the army. Who would seriously want it? No need to put yourself in this state, Luffy. Release him, please. Seeing him go, Luffy glared at Eraser, closing his fist. Nevertheless, he finally dropped it to the ground. Then getting up, the man motioned for his men to return to the base. But as soon as he wanted to join them, he heard Lucy say. In your place, I would be ashamed of myself. Then coming to a standstill, Eraser finally lowers his gaze before affirming. I am ashamed of this base. I said the blonde. Too late. Closing the gate behind him, Eraser disappeared from his field of vision. The FFF and they dare to pretend to be part of justice. Rayner remarked, sneering slightly. It is to die of laughing. There's nothing funny about it. Lucy replied, heading for Kobe. Hearing the doors close behind his back, the child, unable to hold back any longer, ended up dropping to his knees as tears ran down his cheeks. I'm a big draw. He affirmed. Yes, I am the king of big draws. Don't say that. Retorted Lucy they are the ones who do not understand the true value of justice. Ignoring his words, Kobe eventually turned to Luffy, who approached them. Luffy, now that I know that being a soldier is impossible for me, would you let me join your crew? But said Lucy. But, Kobe and your dream. I don't care anymore to be a member of the Navy. He retorted, sobbing. You heard them, right. I don't have the profile to be a soldier. But, if you want Luffy, I know a lot about sailing. And then, there is no faster than me to completely polish a boat. So, will you take me with you? With what I experienced with Alvida, it is not as if the life of a pirate was unknown to me. Looking at him without saying anything, Luffy didn't display the smile he had when Lucy and Rayner had offered to join his crew. Instead, all he did was open his mouth to say. No way. What wondered the boy? But why? Then tilting his head back, Luffy lowered it with all his strength forward and struck Kobe's forehead. Ah, Kobe. Horrified Lucy, seeing him fall backwards. But what? Putting an arm in front of her, Rayner asked her to be quiet while Luffy advanced towards the child and grabbed him by his collar. It's good are you awake now what's the story of giving up your dream so quickly? It seems to me that you wanted to become a soldier to capture pirates, but you heard him, right? They don't want me. So what asked Luffy? Is that a reason to give up on your dream so quickly? If they don't accept you here, all you have to do is look elsewhere. The basics of the navy are not missing. And if they don't want you either, you don't have to persevere and fight until they decide to take you. There is no question that I let you give up so easily. Releasing him then, he let the boy continue to cry while clenching his teeth. Finally, getting on all fours, Kobe started banging his head against the concrete collar, which was under his feet. Repeating this gesture several times, he quickly opened his forehead without someone doing anything to stop him. Finally, after a few moments, he finally stopped and got up again. Once done, he said, without paying attention to the blood coming out of his wound, yes, you're absolutely right. I must not give up so quickly. If I want to be caught in a base, I must show my determination and never back down from a refusal. Touching his wound with his fingertips, he began to moan slightly. Seeing him do it, Lucy immediately rushed towards him and began to pass a handkerchief over his forehead. Let you see your wound. No, but what took you to hit your forehead as well? Suddenly pushing her away, the boy ends up shaking his head. No, I don't want to forget this injury. I actually want her pain to remind me of what I just said. If I get this car, it will be like committing to a promise. Whenever I step back in front of an obstacle, I will open it so that the pain makes me forget the danger I encounter. Yes, this is the only way I currently have to get stronger. Listening to him again, without saying anything, Luffy closed his fist before throwing it at the child. Nevertheless, he smacked his chest gently before smiling at him. Yeah there, I find you, little soldier. Understanding that he was encouraging him in his own way, Kobe suddenly saluted him from the navy before turning around. Good, in this case, I will go to Historia Island this is where the 124th Navy Army is located. Facing them, I will be more determined than ever. Noting that he had just boosted him, Lucy ends up approaching Luffy before telling him. Even if I hardly know you, I already have the impression that you have what it takes to become a wonderful chef. It's just that I don't like people giving up on their dreams so quickly. The pirate said her. And it's the same for you. I want you to make your dream come true until the end. You don't have to tell me twice. Assured the wizard with a confident smile. Even in the face of death, I would never abandon my friends. Returning her smile, Luffy gently patted her on the back to encourage her to follow Kobe. Seeing them go, Rayner remained alone in front of the base before asking them. I might be the one who's wrong, but didn't you say that you plan to meet Zoro, Mujiwara? Ah, I had completely forgotten. Confessed the man, immediately turning around. Anyway, we will certainly not be able to see him. Retorted Lucy. In fact, I was hoping they would let us in when Kobe had offered to register. But, from what I can understand, foreigners are not welcome here. We just have to go from behind. Luffy said, bypassing the building. Luffy, wait. Shouted Lucy and Kobe, before following him. 
Sighing, meanwhile, Raina returned to her original shape and made wings appear behind her back. Then, beating her wings, her began to rise in the air and flew over the base. Seen from above, she quickly noticed the enormous courtyard that the building comprised. However, it was a figure in the middle of the courtyard that caught her attention. Eventually landing at the top of the base, she couldn't help but cast an astonished look, identifying the crucified figure of a man. Luffy, it's a very bad idea. Kobe replied, seeing him begin to climb the wall surrounding the back of the base. Don't worry as long as we don't say we're pirates, we'll be fine, right? Seeing what happened just now, I really doubted. Retorted Lucy, imitating him however. Raising her head over the wall, the young blonde immediately inspected the place. It's crazy how great it is. She noticed. However, there is no one in sight. Hey, look. Cried Luffy, pointing to a silhouette. Following her gaze, Lucy widened her eyes, seeing a crucified man in the middle of the courtyard. At the mercy of the sun's rays, the poor man was sweating profusely while blood came from the few wounds on his face. Looking down, he let his face show only a few green strands protruding from the black bandana he had on his head. Seeing him in this posture, Lucy couldn't help shivering as she thought about what Gajil had done to Levy and the others before crucifying them. It's it's horrible. Rorano Rorano is Oro. Kobe suddenly stuttered, seeing the man in his turn. No doubt, it's him. Why is he here and not in a cell? Asked Lucy. Considering his injuries, the soldiers lynched him. No, no idea. Kobe told her. Maybe, maybe he tried to fight back and, hey, you. Suddenly cried a voice. Then looking up, Zoro ends up looking at them before declaring. You shouldn't be here. So, go crack someone else's ears. Hey, are you Zoro? Asked Luffy. Yeah, why? What are you doing here? Why are you in this state? I have been here for three weeks. Taught him Zoro. For three weeks, I have been chained to this piece of wood without being fed, and I have been beaten from time to time by the soldiers of this place. Since three weeks ago, repeated Lucy. Suddenly rummaging in her pockets, she ends up extracting a cereal bar, a rare object she had on her, leaving the island of Tenro. Then jumping over the wall, she went to Zoro while tearing the snack's packaging. Hey Lucy. Wanted to stop Kobe. Too late. Already standing in front of Zoro, the blonde handed him the treat in front of his mouth and said. Here it's not much, but I'm sure you must want to. Glancing at her, Zoro shook his head before saying. Your pity, you can keep it. I hate charity. Finding that he had the same character as Raynor, Lucy didn't take the trouble to insist and preferred to give him a knee in the abdomen. Screaming in pain, Zoro then opened his mouth and Lucy immediately took the opportunity to stuff the cereal bar inside him. Then clasping her hands in front of his mouth, she forced him to swallow the food, despite his protests. Finally, after a few seconds, she saw him swallow. But it wasn't that complicated. She observed. DSSS. He said, looking away from her. Get out before you get into trouble. Hey, what are you doing here? Arriving at this instant, Eraser and the two soldiers just now ran towards Lucy, weapons pointed at her. Didn't I ask you to leave wanted to know the sergeant? You are obstructing justice in this place. Justice annoyed Lucy. What justice insulting people who want to become soldiers and let prisoners starve to death is it justice for you? That out eraser ordered her. Leave now. And why would you let her go? A voice chuckled behind him. Turning around then, Eraser and Lucy could see a few men walking towards them, including a blonde guy dressed with luxury clothes. Holding the arm of a young girl in his hand, he forced the child to follow him while she tried in vain to struggle. Hermipsan. Eraser and the two other soldiers wondered. Decidedly, there are a lot of people who come here today. Hermip noticed, pushing the little girl until she fell at Lucy's feet. Who is this guy wanted to know Luffy? Surely a senior manager. Assured Kobe. Few with him, Lucy is. Law number three states that anyone who helps a prisoner in this place will be considered a traitor. Hermip announced. Then shaking a small box, he finally opened its lid and presented the two meatballs inside. But giving food to prisoners is considered to be helping them. Said Hermip sarcastically. On the other hand, it seems far too tasty for a prisoner like him. Suddenly taking one of the dumplings, he bit into it while the little girl retorted that it was not for him. However, a few seconds later, Hermip finally dropped the dumpling and spit out what was in his mouth. Yerk, this is despicable. What sugar? Ha uh, yes I put sugar in place of salt, thinking it would be better. Confessed the child. Stupid girl. Cried Hermip, dropping the rest of the box to the ground. The rice ball should be salted and not sweet. Then raising his foot, he had no qualms about crushing the food under the child's tears. That's all your dumplings deserve. He affirmed. Mean. Cried the little girl, running towards him in order to save the half dumpling, which was still intact. However, Hermip suddenly kicked her and lodged in her stomach. The poor girl thus found herself sending back. Then catching it, Lucy immediately glared at the man before exclaiming. Are you a monster or what how dare you hit this poor child? Um said Hermip. And you, who are you? It's just a stranger. Suddenly declared Eraser. 
She just wanted to see Urano Zoro up close. Nothing more, really? Hermip wondered, looking at the packaging that Lucy still had in her hand. In that case, I guess you haven't given this criminal anything to eat, have you? Expecting a no from Lucy, Eraser's eyes widened when he heard her to say. Yes, I fed it because I am against your methods, stupid woman. Eraser thought, watching her challenge Hermip. Oh, then you are against my father's methods asked Hermip, losing his smile. Your father, yes, Colonel Morgan is none other than my dear father. Announced the man, with pride. So if you don't want to suffer his anger, I advise you to do nothing that can annoy me. Come on, I'll be nice. I'll let you go, if you beg me on your knees, out of the question. Retorted Lucy, without any hesitation. You asked for it. Sighed Hermip. In that case, lock them up, both, I wondered his men. I told you to capture them. Repeated the man. We will see if they want to challenge me again, after a stay in the dungeon, but but they are only a child and a young woman. Noticed Eraser. We can't lock them up just because they tried to feed Zoro, and they answered you. These actions are punishable by law, according to the rules that my father established. Retorted Hermip. So obey. He also gave them a nasty look, and said. If you don't, be sure my father will know about this sudden mutiny. Shivering upon hearing this, a few soldiers eventually swallowed before pointing their weapons at the two girls. Hands in the air, Lucy cried Luffy, starting to pass over the wall. What who is it began Hermip, seeing him. Hardly had he had time to say his words when a spear of light, coming from the sky, was planted in the ground, right in front of him. But several men wondered, drawing back, at the sight of the spear. Suddenly shining brightly, the ladder exploded, creating a huge cloud of dust. What is that thing? Recognizing the attack, Lucy tried to find the owner. Brainer. Nevertheless, a pair of male hands ends up catching it at the waist. Feeling thus carried, at the same time as Rika, she found herself taken towards Luffy and Kobe. Seeing them emerge from the cloud of dust, the two boys could see a red-haired man with a pair of glasses on his nose running, carrying the two girls in his arms. Loke. Wondered Lucy, recognizing the spirit. It seems that I arrived just in time. Noticed the spirit, flying over the wall. Leaning back, in order to follow him with his gaze, Luffy ends up falling back on the other side of the wall. Falling on his head, he straightened up almost immediately, as the spirit landed near him. Thank you Loke. Lucy thanked him, leaving his arms. It's nothing. He assured. Wow, so cool are you a spirit to ask Luffy. Yes, I am the spirit of the lion. Said the man. And you, I presume that you are Luffy, Lucy's new captain so it is on you that our hopes for saving the rest of the guild rest. Hearing this, Lucy's face broke before she said. I'm sorry Loke. I I haven't been able to do anything. Acnologia crushed me like an insect, you don't have to do so much Lucy. Assured her Loke. If I had been able to fight him, I certainly would not have done better. Maybe you feel useless now, but if you can find Fairy Sphere, you will be the one who made the most of all of us, but I began Lucy. They are there. Cried a soldier, leaving the base. Patch them, we must spin. Cried Kobe, starting to run away. Why there are not even ten people. Luffy remarked, cracking his knuckles. This is not the time to get bored. Retorted the boy, pulling him by the arm. Let's go to Lucy. Loke advised, grabbing the little girl, before shining her fist. But Anne Rayner Wanted to know the sorceress, remembering that she was not with them. Too late. Hitting the ground, Loke raised a new cloud of dust, which enveloped everyone and prevented the soldiers from seeing them. But now, where did they go? Find them Hermip ordered. Otherwise, I would tell my father. Chapter 4 Seeing Luffy and the others go away, Zoro sighed. He had been here for over 20 days, and yet, it was the first time that he had seen anyone other than a soldier. It had annoyed him somewhat. However, he couldn't help licking his lips to gobble up a few crumbs from the cereal bar that had settled there. There is not to say, you are really hungry. A voice chuckled behind his back. Hum said Zoro. Who is here? Then hearing flapping wings, he finally saw Rainer's silhouette fly over him before landing in front of him. Taking little time to see her wings, Zoro snickered a bit before asking. Are you a deity who came to set me free? I warn you, I don't believe in God so it would surprise me that it is this old man who gave you this order. Do you really believe that a superior being like me would come to deal with the case of a waste like you? Rainer retorted, smiling back. In this case, what are you doing here? Are you friend with a blonde girl? No, it's just an acquaintance. Clarified the fallen angel. I don't consider humans as my friends and to answer at your first question. Suddenly, she made a spear appear in her hand before asking him. Do you want me to finish you as soon as possible? Unable to hide an ounce of astonishment in his eyes, Zoro ends up calming before declaring, in a strict tone, but with a confident little smile. Not worth it. My will alone will allow me to leave this place in fact, if I stay a week here again, I will be free. Free repeated Rainer. Yet I made a deal with this coward of Hermip if I hold a whole month here, he will freed me. 
You understand now that I have done the hard part, it will be very easy for me to finish all this. Looking at him, while he was sure of himself, Rainer finally made her spear disappear and moved. Passing Zoro, she stood behind him and sat down against his wooden post. You know, generally, I don't care at all about the fate of a miserable human like you however, I think you have a lot of guts. Of course I have. Zoro assured her. If I want to be the greatest swordsman in this world, I would always need it. Oh you are gorilla ambitious. Rainer noticed. Too bad that your efforts can never help you get to my level. Laying her head against a wooden post, she raised her head to the sky before admitting to him. I don't really like to see you like this. What do you mean? Tied up and crucified at this post it reminds me bad memories. Really Zora wondered. Yeah memories of when I loved the humans. Rainer said. Closing her eyes then, she could not stop herself from trembling, seeing herself tied to a wooden cross, while citizens of a village was insulting her with all the insults of world, everything threatening to pierce she with stakes. Unable to defend herself, the poor girl, having white wings at this moment, can only cry in indignation when she saw that she was on the verge of death. And it was, just then, with indescribable rage, that she managed to free herself before flying towards the villagers in order to massacre them. Suddenly opening her eyes, the fallen angel began to breathe quickly, while a drop of sweat had materialized on her forehead. Are you okay? Zoro asked her. Yeah. Rainer said dryly. Why wouldn't it go? Simply shrugging his shoulders, Zoro ends up asking her. Can you do me a favor? Which, suddenly pointing to the crushed dumplings, he nodded and asked her. Can you put that in my mouth? Disgusted by his request, Rainer barely touched the rice balls with the tip of her finger as she noticed. That doesn't look like anything anymore. Not only did I understand that they were, basically, bad. And, in addition with dust and dirt, it should be poisonous. Negative more negative, it's always positive. Replied Zoro, opening his mouth. Don't worry. Just send. Watching him, Rainer simply sighs before picking up the two crushed dumplings. You humans, you really look like just pigs. She said, putting the food in Zoro's mouth. Doing immediately, the fallen angel could hear Zoro crunching several times in small stones, in dirt or in excruciatingly sweet pieces of rice. Crying of disgust as he did his best to don't spit everything out, Zoro had to make a final effort to swallow the whole lot. Then he coughed and gasped, as if he had just swallowed a whole pepper. I warn you. Noticed the fallen angel, at begging to giggle. Shut up, stupid crow. Zoro ordered her. Finally stopping coughing, he ends up mumbling. If you see the blonde and the child, could you say thank you from me? I doubt that I could see them again in the future. Thinking about Luffy's words about recruiting Zoro to the crew, Raynor suddenly replied. I don't know about the little girl, but I think you will see the blonde again soon. Why that, you will know soon. Assured the fallen angel. Looking her, without feeling the slightest fear, Zoro suddenly asked her. In fact, why are you not scared because of my presence usually, people never dare approach me as soon as they recognize me. I could return the question to you. Retorted Rainer. Usually when someone sees my wings for the first time, they are immediately frightened. I can admit it to you, I already saw things more frightening than that. Affirmed Zoro. And then, it must be said that your clothes have something to do with it. Then remembering the clothes that Orphis had given her to replace her leather jumpsuit when she transformed, Rainer began to blush in shame before whistling. Stupid human. But these words, she was about to fly away when Zora noticed. The first cloud of smoke, you created it with your spear, right? You claim the opposite, but you did this to save your friend, didn't you? I don't know what you're talking. Retorted the fallen angel, taking off. I have no friends. As he protected you repeated Luffy. Yes, that's it. Said the little girl. In company of Rika, the pirate and the three other members of the gang, managed to sow the soldiers. They were now hiding in a small alley while the soldiers dropped the charges. In the meantime, Rika had told them why Zoro had been caught by the navy. They have saved me from the attack on the wolf of Hermop, he was captured after, he made a deal with him, stating that he would be free if he spent a month tied to his post, without eating anything and it started three weeks ago. In this case, he is not so mean. Kobe understood. Of course. Cried Rika. The bad guys are Hermop and Colonel Morgan. Since their arrival here, they have only taxed us, installed a regime of terror, and then, and then Morgan decided to drop us at the slightest attack. What do you mean? The other day, pirates had landed here. Taught them Rika. At first, they wanted to keep a low profile and just stock up on speed before leaving nevertheless, a fight broke out between them and the people of the island finally, a few moments later, the pirates had noticed, despite our requests, that no soldier had come to arrest them. Seeing this, they finally gave themselves to their heart to win everything he could steal, they left a few hours later, without a soldier coming to help us. They did not even help us to repair the damage. Instead, Morgan raised taxes again on the pretext of needing money for repairs. However, apart from keeping it, he did nothing with our money. Listening to them without saying anything, Lucy ends up clenching her fist before whistling. What a monster. Lucy, how are you? Kobe asked, seeing her tremble with rage. 
Suddenly grabbing him by his collar, she pressed him against a wall while shouting at him. That's it is that what you mean by justice? Are you kidding me or what? I thought you wanted to join the navy to become a good soldier, but but, it's true. Affirmed the boy. Normally, the navy's bases should not behave like this, don't lie. Shouted the blonde. Rather say that you intend to gain rank to be able to imitate these rots. Lucy, stop it. Suddenly advised Loke, placing a hand on her shoulder. Suddenly calming down, the young woman made the child cry while he said. I never want to become a man like this Morgan. If I want to join the navy, it is to be able to help people. Not the contrary I want to be and remain a good man. Hearing him, Lucy suddenly let go before apologizing. Excuse me anger made me say awful things, it's nothing. Affirmed the boy. After all, I too cannot bear such actions on the part of a colonel. Suddenly brandishing his hand in front of his mouth, Loke suddenly signaled him to shut up while his ears straightened. The problem Lucy asked him. It seems that soldiers are approaching. He announced. Listening then, the rest of the band could, in fact, hear the awful irritating voice of Hermit who exclaimed. Whoever doesn't kneel before me will be punished by my father. Passing their heads out of the aisle, Luffy and Lucy could see people squatting in front of the man, while the blonde walked most quietly in the world, escorted by a few soldiers. Ha ha ha. It's really wonderful to move around while showing these rednecks that I am superior to them. Again in anger, Lucy found it hard to stay still. Suddenly arriving toward Hermip, two soldiers exclaimed. It is impossible to get their hands on them, Hermip said. It seems that they have already left the island, but you are a bunch of bums. The man got angry. Sighing then, he took a few seconds to think before saying. In this case, so that no other mutiny is triggered I will have Verano executed tomorrow. What? Wondered Lucy. But he can't. And your promise in this case suddenly exclaimed Luffy. Um said Hermip, seeing him come out of the alley where he was hidden. Who are you? Hermip said, he is one of the fugitives. Recognized him as a soldier. Is that so wondered the man? Well, here is one less clever than the others. In your place, I would have continued to remain hidden, Mujiwara. And your promise? Repeated Luffy. My promise Hermip repeated, as if he didn't know what he was talking about. Suddenly chuckling he ends up asking. Oh want you to talk about my promise with Raranoa, it's nothing. It was all a farce on my part. From the start, all I wanted to do was humiliate him in public. Nevertheless, tough as he is, I doubt he will beg me once to release him in the next few days to tell you the truth, I was waiting for something to happen in order to charge him. Thank you, Mujiwara. Now, thanks to you, I can execute Zoro by declaring that he had tried to escape, with your help. Grinding her teeth, Lucy hissed. But rot. Behind her, while Loke lit his fist, Kobe couldn't help but start to tremble in rage. So is that it is the Navy really nothing more than a collection of selfish people doing just what they want. Good. Now, Mujiwara, it's time for me to stop you too, you who is none other than began Hermit. Rushing like a torpedo, Luffy found himself in front of him and struck him violently. Not expecting this, no soldier made the slightest movement, seeing him crash on the ground, swollen cheek. Finally, after a few seconds, they finally exclaimed. Hermip san. Luffy wondered Lucy and Kobe, seeing him correctly put his hat back on his head. Around them, several civilians remained frozen in fear, seeing the colonel's son being beaten, while others had already fled. Hand on cheek, Hermip got up with difficulty, while he whimpered. You, how dare you hit me? Even my father never slapped me. You just sentenced yourself to the death penalty, as if your threat scared me. Retorted Luffy. For your information, I'm Monkey D. Luffy, a pirate, a pirate, yes, and I'm going to freeze Oro so that he becomes a member of my crew. The boy decided, then headed for the navy base. Clenching his fist, Hermip immediately ordered. Fill him now. Immediately, several rifles were pointed at the pirate, who turned their backs on them. Continuing to walk, he paid no attention to the men, as he heard. Pull. But the moment the soldiers prepared to shoot, they saw a bright light before hearing. Regulus impact. Before they even understood what was going on, the soldiers saw Loke rush at them and shoot his fist at them. A golden explosion immediately sounded, sending Hermip and his men to waltz. Seeing the danger averted, Lucy rushed towards Luffy before questioning him. When you say you want to freeze Oro, you, yeah, I'm really going to do it. Assured Luffy. Sorry for what will happen next, but I intend to declare war on the base of this island, don't worry. Assured Lucy, with a confident smile. Let's go get Zoro and Raynor and let's go here. You have nothing to fear Lucy. Said Loke, joining them. Whatever happens, I will protect you. If Zoro is a good person, it is my duty, as a future naval soldier, to save him. Kobe finally assured. In this case, here we go. Luffy decided, heading for the base. On the roof of the Navy's base, Raynor was watching a multitude of soldiers activate while they were busy cleaning a real gold statue at least 10 meters high. The statue represented a man with an axe as a hand. Remaining discreet until now, in a dark corner, the fallen angel looked at the statue with envy. 
She, who loved silver, couldn't help but think that turning all that gold into this filthy statue was a real mess. Instead, they should have taken her as a model and worshipped the higher being she was. Finally, after a while, a man joined them, and Raynor could not hide the surprise when she saw that he was the spitting image of the statue. Colonel Morgan. Greeted the soldiers, seeing him. Is everything ready? Yes, the statue is finished and completely cleaned. Assured him a soldier. Very good, in this case. Ad suddenly interrupted someone. Hum? Said the colonel, seeing Hermip arrive with some men. Who does Hermip have? Someone hit me. Announced the blonde. Yes, I was brutally beaten by the hand of the pirate, the pirate repeated Morgan. Yes, and I want you to delete him he is easy to recognize, he has a straw hat on the head, Ujiwara Rainer wondered. That is not possible I leave them for five minutes and they are getting into trouble, I said Luffy. Um said Zoro, looking up. Is it the day of the visits or what? Then recognizing Luffy, he noticed. You were with the blonde, right? Yeah, I'm Monkey D. Luffy. Is that supposed to tell me something Zoro asked him? Maybe not now but know that everyone will know me later, to be the man who will be the king of pirates, Pirate King repeated Zoro. You and the blonde, are you pirates? Yes, and there is also another girl with us. And with you, there will be four of us. How about that, with me? Asks Zoro. No way that I become a pirate. I am a bounty hunter and it suits me perfectly. Come on, don't be your spoiler. Will you accept if I deliver you? In your dreams I don't need your pity. I'm doing very well on my own. Anyway, I have a much more important goal to achieve than becoming an enemy of the navy. I don't think you are very friends with them either. Retorted Luffy. Seriously, that wouldn't change much. I don't care what people think of me. I have never done anything against my principles and I intend to continue on this path. Now get out. No way you would become a pirate, no matter what you say. Don't decide for me. Raged Zoro. What if we go get your saber? Asked a voice. Appearing near Luffy, Lucy gave Zoro a broad smile, filled with hope. If I understood correctly, these men stole your saber, right? And the sword of a swordsman is like his soul, isn't it? So, from a logical point of view, if we managed to get hold of your weapon, it would be as if your soul belonged to us. GRRR. Growled Zoro. Your logic is ridiculous. In this case, I will steal it. Decided Luffy. If you want me to give it back, you will have to join my crew. What is this blackmail wanted to know Zoro? Two hands then clapped their cheeks while Lucy forced him to look at her. Zoro. You're a good man. And I won't let anyone kill you, do you hear? The kill me wondered Zoro. Hey, what are you talking about? Preparing to tell him the truth, Lucy suddenly felt a blade touch her neck. Lightning fast, Luffy pressed her to the ground, preventing his friend from getting her head beheaded. But what she wondered, as strands of her hair fell in front of her. Damn it, I miss someone saddened. Behind the duo, a man with a brown beard stood with a sharp sword in his hand. Who are you? asked Luffy. Me, I'm just the most competent soldier on this base. He affirmed. My name is Greedo. How does that the most competent? Asked a voice. I'm too competent than you. Appearing in turn, next to him, a second man, looking like two drops of water to Greedo, began to pout. Yeah, excuse me Greedy. Apologized Greedo. It's just that our duo is so invincible that I feel like we are one and the same person. Don't worry, brother. Anyone would like to be who we are when we fight together. Who are these clowns wanted to know Lucy? The Gridway twins. Announced Zoro. Two brothers who love to reign the terror in which they pass. They are the only people on this island, besides Morgan, to whom Hermit dares not say anything. Normal, with Colonel Morgan, we are the only ones who can pretend to be real soldiers. Sneered Greedy, taking out two pistols. And in a minute, we will prove it to you. Assured Greedo, pointing to a second saber. Then positioned themselves in a combat position, they exclaimed. This is the special technique of the Gridway brothers' man at forearms. Suddenly rushing towards Luffy, Greedo tried to take him by speed. Crossing his sabers in the direction of his throat, he almost cut it if Luffy had not stooped in time. Seeing him immediately back off, Lucy took out her whip and got ready to use it. Nevertheless, a bullet suddenly crossed her hand and made her drop her weapon. Letting out a cry of pain, she fell to her knees while Greedy snickered, licking the end of his pistol. Lucy? Cried Luffy. Taking advantage of his lowering of his guard, Gardo kicked him in the back to unbalance him before pointing a saber at his face. Reacting in time, Luffy blocked him by placing his feet on the sides of the blade. Then using his strength, he threw the blade and Greedo back. Feeling tumbling in the air, the man easily regained his balance before resuming his deal with Luffy. Ahaha you are not too bad. We will be able to have a little fun. For her part, trying to use her wrong hand, Lucy directed her magic whip at Greedy. Dodging it without problem, the man said. That's not how you will defeat someone as trained as me. But as he started to run towards Lucy, with his guns pointed at her, a light suddenly blinded him. What? Suddenly spitting blood, he felt a powerful punch hit him in the abdomen. Crushing in the distance, he gave way to a nervous Loke. How dare you take it out on Lucy, Loke? Rejoices the young woman. Sorry Lucy. 
the spirit apologized, seeing her hurt. Beating the guards in front of the gate took me longer than expected, no, don't worry. Assured Lucy. Now the number of enemies has decreased, thanks to you. Hey, who are you wanted to know Greedo, looking at Loke. You want to play hero, right? Greedy asked, standing up. Seeing them begin to surround him, Loke said. Oh, I take care of these buffoons, I said Luffy. Take care of Lucy. Ordered the lion, then loosening his tie. Then making his fist shine, he began to growl. Here, it will bleed. Okay ends up nodding Luffy. Then grabbing Lucy's arm, he started to run towards the building while affirming. Don't worry Zoro, I'll be back soon with your saber. The RRRR who hell are these guys wanted to know the man, seeing Loke get into position to fight the two soldiers. They want to die or what? Dad cried Hermop. Why don't you teach this straw had a good lesson? He is just a pirate who dared to lay hands on your own son. Because this story bothers me. Confessed Morgan. He may be a pirate, capturing him will not bring me any profit if his bounty is not high enough. But Dad, he Hermop insisted. His father's fist suddenly hit him in the middle of his jaw and made him fall at the feet of the nearest soldiers. Some could not hide their astonishment at this, while Raynor almost laughed, not missing anything of the scene. In fact, she already had an idea of Morgan's next words. I don't take care of the small fry, except if he decides to stand up to me. He retorted. And then, I'm tired of always having to deal with the troubles you cause. For once, shut up or else take revenge all alone. I have no intention of dealing with this matter I have better things to do. Like admiring my brand new gold statue. Suddenly exhaling a column of smoke, he suddenly noticed. By the way, I heard that some civilians had entered the premises to give food to Rarana. Is it true? Ah yes. Confessed Hermop. In fact, Mujiwara is one of them. According to the laws that I have established, it has never been forbidden for anyone to hit you. Remarked Morgan. However, according to my third law, it is strictly forbidden to feed prisoners on pain of death. As a result, by feeding Zoro, they decided to defy the law, and so did I. Looking at the men who were on the roof, he pointed to Eraser. Surgeon Eraser. What do you know about fugitives? The latest news, there are six. Eraser taught him, by being careful. There is Mujiwara, a blonde woman, another woman with black hair, a little girl, a young man who wanted to register as a sailor and, at latest news, a red-haired man. You seem to be well informed. Remarked Morgan. Very well, in this case take your men and go hunt them, in town kill them all. But but Colonel. There are two children with them, including a little girl and two women. You already told me. Asserted Morgan. And I want them to get killed. Wow, it smells very bad for we. Rainer noticed. What should I do leave the island quickly? Or take the trouble to warn this fool of Mujiwara? I refuse. She heard suddenly. How Morgan wondered, noticing that Eraser was standing up to him. Accept your respect, it is impossible for me to kill women or children who have done almost nothing to deserve this. Sighing, hearing this, Morgan said. It's always sad to lose a sergeant. No sooner did he say that than his axe lashed across a racer's chest. Still in his salvation position, the surgeon barely saw his gesture, while a stream of blood escaped from his body. Feeling his energy leave him, he collapsed to the ground, under the horrified looks of the other soldiers, as well as of Hermop. His son immediately asked him. Daddy, why did you do that? Someone incompetent and who does not obey orders is a soldier who is replaceable. Morgan told him, glaring at his son and his men. Listen to me carefully after my statue is lifted, I want you all to go to town. I would give you two hours to find the fugitives and bring back their bodies. If, unfortunately, there is only one missing, you will suffer the same fate. After all, none of you will ever know me to be of much use. Immediately fading, the soldiers began to tremble, realizing that he was serious. Still listening to him, Raynor immediately understood one thing. If Hermop was execrable, he was almost an angel compared to his father. It was like comparing a little strike that liked to rack eat a few people to a mafia leader killing for the slightest word wrong. Better not to stick around. She noticed, starting to back away. Preparing, thus, to fly away, she was suddenly surprised to hear you shout someone. Um gum rocket, soaring through the air, Luffy found himself above the building, carrying Lucy under his arm. Shouting in fear, the woman couldn't help but close her eyes as they got higher and higher. Stretching his arm to be able to go towards the roof, Luffy grabbed the head of the statue of Morgan and exerted a force efficient to make it lose its balance. Hauling into the void, it served as a springboard for Luffy who managed in time to jump on it in order to land on the roof. View, it was close. However, as he let go of Lucy, the duo could hear the statue crashing down and see the soldiers' mouths touching the ground. Understanding that he had just done something stupid, Luffy began to scratch the back of his head before affirming. I am sorry, fill them. Morgan immediately ordered. Why me I didn't do anything. Sighed Lucy. But suddenly her gaze fell on Eraser's body, lying in a pool of blood, as he winced in pain. Then noticed that blood covered Morgan's axe, the girl's gaze hardened again, understanding what had just happened. 
You just wounded one of your men to death, are you not ashamed? How wondered Morgan. How should it bother you? For your information, he is in this state for not having wanted to kill you and your other friends. If he's in this state, it's your fault. Junk. She raged, taking out one of her keys. Taking advantage of the fact that Loke used her own magic to stay active, she summoned a new spirit. Open yourself, door spirits. Come to me Capricorn. Standing immediately in front of the soldiers, a bipedal and dressed goat began to crack his neck, asking. Dear Lucy Sama, how could I be useful to you today? Preparing to ask him to attack Morgan, the blonde suddenly saw Luffy grabbing Hermop. Then seeing that the door to leave the roof was wide open, she finally asked him. Take this injured man and take him with us. Very well. Capricorn nodded, immediately putting a racer on his back, before following the duo out of the roof. When the soldiers remained frozen, they preferred to do nothing, while the fugitives left. But what are you doing, bunch of incapacitated people asked Morgan. Go kill them. But Colonel, this girl she just summoned a spirit. So what this doesn't change the orders I gave you go all out, kill. An explosion then occurs, in the courtyard. What is still going on Morgan wanted to know, looking at the place where a fight seemed to be taking place. At that moment, he noticed Loke's presence, countering Greedo's parades, while Greedy kept turning around him so that he could shoot him in the back. It's the red-haired man who saved the little girl and the blonde woman. Someone recognized him. Clenching his fist, Morgan found it difficult to control his anger, noting that many people had decided to stand up to him. However, in few instants, he could control his rage and says dot. Bring the cannons here. I will assure you that these renegades will soon be, altogether, six feet underground. Chapter 5 When are you going to die wanted to know Greedo, swinging his saber towards Loke. Dodging the weapon with grace and elegance, the spirit found himself in front of the man and grabbed his arm. Then making his fist shine, he got ready to hit him. However, he had to take a step back to dodge a bullet that grazed the front of his head. Jumping straight back, Greedo approached his brother, who reloaded his revolvers. Greedo, when are you going to slit his throat wanted to know Greedy. Shut up he don't stop moving. Try to shoot him. What do you think I'm doing I feel like this idiot can predict any of my attacks. No, it's just that you're really too slow. Retorted the spirit, lightly dust their clothes. To be honest, I must admit that your duo is quite effective for your coordination, I give you a good point however, this is the only point I would give you for the rest, you have everything to review. DRRR, are you looking for us or what and why do you want to fight against us, actually do you want to die to try and save Verona? No, I'm just making sure to help Lucy. He retorted. Me, I didn't ask you for anything. Zoro suddenly raged while a figure had crept up to him. Trying to free him, Kobe retorted. We must free you in fact, Hermop wants to execute you, tomorrow. How astonished the man. Impossible he gave me his word. He never intended to hold it. Retorted the child. He just wanted to humiliate you before to kill you because of this, Luffy hit him, and now, we have become outlaws. But why did you get involved in all this wanted to know the swordsman? I nothing asked you. I want to become a navy soldier. Suddenly informed the child. That's why I can't bear such injustice. Despite the fact that everyone sees you as a demon, the fact that you have captured dangerous criminals proves that you have a heart compared to the men of this base. So, I tell you, a shot from the roof's navy bay sounds at this moment. Opening their eyes wide, Zoro and Loke saw, in horror, Kobe fall to the ground with a bloodstain on his back. Kobe cried Loke. You lowered your guard. Suddenly sneered Greedo, rushing at him, sabers in hand. Deciding that it was time to stop the stupid fight, Loke stooped to dodge his blade before throwing his fist in the stomach. An explosion of light then sounds, causing Greedo's body to fly 10 meters behind. Rushing like a rocket, he ended up crashing against the wall of Navy's building. Bree Greedo shouted his brother. Wanting to avenge him, he began to unload his weapon toward the spear. Nevertheless, he saw Loke running towards him, striking each of his ammunition. Impact Regulus Gatling. Seeing him advance like a true god, Greedy could only cry while well, his weapons were now devoid of the slightest bullet. No, please, this one is for Lucy. Raged Loke, hitting him in the face. Similar to his first punch, the attack robbed the second brother and crashed him alongside his twin. It is done. Loke assured, turning immediately to Kobe. No longer paying attention, he ended up spitting blood, feeling several bullets piercing his body. What he wondered, turning around. Seeing then several men aiming at him from the top of the roof of the base, he could only be angry with himself for not having felt their presence. Sorry Lucy. He thought, disappearing. Colonel, we have just brought down the two renegades. Declared a soldier on the roof. Hearing this and seeing the cannons position themselves on the roof, Morgan ends up going towards the door, allowing to leave the premises before declaring. I will kill Mujiwara and the blondie girl at my signal, you will fire and bombard Rurano's body with cannon, as well as anyone else entering the yard, to help him understood. Yes, Colonel. Hey, stupid man, tell us where is Zoro's sword. Ordered a voice. Luffy, you're strangling him. Noticed a second voice. 
I don't care he just has to tell me everything right away. Finally opening his eyes, Eraser noticed that he was on the back of a strange bipedal goat while Luffy and Lucy were running near them. But what am I doing here? Noticing then that they were inside the base, he began to shout. What are you doing here, you idiots I already told you to run away. Seeing him suddenly spit blood, Lucy placed a handkerchief over his mouth to force him to shut up. Don't speak you are hurt. Pushing aside the handkerchief, however, he retorted. Do you have no idea what Morgan could do to you when he finds you? If I prevented your friend from becoming a soldier here, it is so that he escapes the Morgan's tyranny. Suddenly stopping to run, Lucy remained motionless before the man's confession. The problem Capricorn asked, stopping just like Luffy. You did all that to protect us, of course. Affirmed the man. I, I didn't want this man to take it out on you. Since becoming commander of this island, he has not stopped terrorizing the population. If you had noticed, there is no boat on this island, except those of the navy, he makes sure to destroy all means of transportation to prevent anyone from running away from here. If I told you to leave, it was to allow you to leave the island before he noticed your presence. And crying, Eraser finally mumbles. It is pathetic that's really all I can do against this man I would like I would so much like to stop him however, he is stronger than me, and in addition, he is my superior. I I can't do anything about him. Yet yet, suddenly shouting, he said. I want this island to become what it was before his arrival, the eraser. Lucy wondered, noticing that she had made a mistake on the man's account from the start. Imbecile. Suddenly cried a voice. Taking advantage of the fact that Luffy stopped shaking him, Hermip had heard eraser's speech and began to criticize eraser. My father is someone invincible. Even if you decide to start a mutiny, it will be impossible for you and your men to stand up to it. He will kill you all without exceptions. If you want to survive on this island, you have to obey him. You, shut up. Luffy ordered him, pressing him against a wall. Instead, just tell us where Zoro's sword is. Luffy, wait. Lucy stopped suddenly, looking at Hermip's face. Noting that both of his cheeks were swollen, she noticed. Luffy only hit your left cheek so why is your second cheek also swollen? DSSS said Hermip. It's not the business of a pirate like you. Your father beat you, right? Yeah, so what asked Hermip. He just showed me that I was nothing to him, except a spare part. Spare part repeated Luffy. We are all spare part, he reproved Eraser. Whether soldiers or his own son, Morgan sees us all as pawns that can be replaced. In this case, why do you behave like this with others? Wanted to know Lucy, looking at the colonel's son. I, I just wanted to show my father that I could be as terrifying as him. How I wanted to look like him. Nevertheless, it seems that his status is more important than his own son. Perhaps I should have kept my mouth shut and kept a low profile, rather than strutting around at the slightest opportunity. The slap suddenly stopped him. This once, his cheeks were so swollen that he barely felt it. However, that didn't stop him from being frightened by Lucy's look. Hell, what's your problem? Just because this man scares you, none of you make the slightest effort to rebel okay. He may be stronger than you, but what could he do against all of you? Damn it, he has an axe, and so, you have sabers he has superhuman strength. You have guns is he part of the navy. You too so what is stopping you from showing him the true sense of justice? Listening to her, Eraser couldn't help but show astonishment while Hermip looked down. Finally, he mumbled. In my room, I said Luffy. What you're looking for is in my room. He informed them, pointing to a door. Is that so said Luffy, immediately heading for the door in question, while still holding Hermip. Entering the room, he and Lucy quickly saw three sabers leaning against a wall. Great. Rejoices Luffy, walking towards them. Which is Zoro's, all, stupid man. Growled Hermip. Everyone knows he fights with three swords at the same time, really asked Luffy. While Capricorn placed a racer on the Helmup's bed, Lucy finally looked out the bedroom window and exclaimed. Luffy. There is a problem. How wondered the pirate, rushing towards her. Looking outside, he finally saw Kobe, lying at the foot of Zoro, while Morgan approached him with a few men. For trying to free a prisoner, you are considered a traitor. Asserted Morgan. Therefore, I would execute you myself. Seeing him raise his arm above his friend's head, Luffy wrapped his arm around Lucy, before crashing into the window. Dropping into the void, he took his friend with him, as well as Hermip, whom he still held by his collar. Nuu, Mujiwara. Hermip begged him. Capricorn, take care of Eraser. Said Lucy. Morgan cried Luffy, rushing at him. Hum? Said the man, turning to him. Picking him, Luffy managed to hit his huge axe and made him take a few steps back before landing in front of Kobe. Blue Luffy the child wondered, straightening up. Kobe, how are you? Asked Lucy, noticing that he was injured. It's nothing. He assured. They just pulled me in the shoulder. But, he lowered his shameful gaze before continuing. But look, he he was kill and and he disappeared. Don't worry. Assured him Lucy. Loke is not the chief of spirits for nothing. I promise we will see him in perfect health. What are you still making here wanted to know Zoro. We got your swords back. Luffy told him, handing him his sabers. 
You had to say it before you had three. Then smiling at him, the pirate asked him. Good, to come back to my previous question. What do you intend to do? Wait until this axe guy decides to kill you or else help me kick his butt. Smiling, hearing him, Zoro ends up saying. I have a dream come true because of this, it is impossible for me to die now alright, I see that I have no choice but to become a pirate and work under your orders captain, great rejoices Luffy. I found my third teammate, it's only if we manage to get out of it. Retorted the swordsman, glaring at the weapons of the soldiers pointed at them. Don't worry. He said, suddenly giving Lucy the sabers. Here, free Zoro with that, but what about you, I make it my business. Assured her captain, advancing towards the soldiers. Recognizing the man who had just destroyed his statue, Morgan immediately exclaimed. Pull him, like a colander. Immediately shooting at the pirate, the soldiers sent him a multitude of bullets which touched him from all sides to finally simply stretch his skin. But that they wondered. Not even hurt. Sneered Luffy, sending the balls back to them. Seeing the soldiers flee to escape the bullets, Zoro and Herma could not restrain a cry of surprise, seeing the powers of Luffy. Even Kobe and Lucy almost had a heart attack when they saw Luffy on the verge of death. But that, the fruit of the devil. Morgan understood, seeing his men's shoots completely ineffective. That's it I ate the fruit of gum gum. Luffy told him. And me, the spirit's fruit. Lucy lied, taking out her keys. Thanks to that, I can summon different types of spirits, like Capricorn, due to users of demon fruit someone feared. But then they are supermen, so what retorted Morgan. If this guy is rubber, you just have to cut his throat and then just steal the blonde's keys once done, slaughtering the girl will be a breeze. So use your sabers, soft rag strip, gripping them, finding that they had no choice, each of the men ended up grabbing his saber and ran to Luffy to settle his account. As if you will succeed in touching me. Sneered the pirate, preparing to strike the runner. Nevertheless, a figure overtook him in an instant and came to block each of the soldiers with the help of three sabers. Finding themselves immobilized, the soldiers could only tremble in fear while Zoro held them back without much difficulty. Wow the class. Cried Luffy. But how Lucy wondered, noticing that she no longer had Zoro sabers in her hands. I barely had time to release him and he's already in action. Has he really eaten nothing for weeks? I plan to become the greatest saber handler in the world. Suddenly cried the man. I agree to follow you as a pirate. However, if one of you prevents me from achieving my goal, I promise to cut you all in circles. The biggest saber handler in the world. Repeated Luffy. Yeah, it looks cool almost as cool as becoming the pirate king. Then, stretching his leg and using it like a whip, the pirate sent the soldiers away and let them crash into Morgan's feet. The colonel, irritated by the weakness of his men, ends up grabbing a den den mushy. Hey, have you finished preparing the cannons? The six cannons are prepared and are headed on Rorano. Assured him a soldier, on the roof. Very well prepared to shoot however, I want the first three cannons change their targets. How is that? Suddenly looking at Luffy and his friends, Morgan said. If these guys are here, I bet it's because of the villagers who ask them for help if this is really the case, they too are traitors. Shoot in the city. What horrified Kobe and Lucy, not believing their ears. But but Colonel we can't do that, on mere suspicion, and then, there is your son who is with the pirates. They surely hold him hostage. What did I tell you, earlier asked Morgan. For me, he is only a spare pawn. Whether he's alive or not doesn't change anything in my eyes kill him if you can't help it. Ah dad is son horrified, falling to his knees. Sorry, but you're just good for nothing. Affirmed his father, without the slightest hesitation. Some junk. Raged Luffy, preparing to attack him. Think well, Mujiwara. Advised the man. If you attack me right away, who will protect your friends from cannonballs? What he wondered. In any case, I wonder who will protect the city. Remarked the colonel, before shouting. Fire. Immediately, six cannonballs were fired, three of which were aimed at Luffy, while the others began to fly over the wall, which surrounded the base. Luffy, you have to stop them implored Lucy, seeing them disappear in the distance, to head towards the city. I can't do it. Retorted his captain, preparing already to stop the three cannonballs that charged them. Smiling, noticing that the pirate no longer controlled the situation, Morgan ended up looking up, however, when he saw a silhouette flying in the sky. What? Suddenly pierced, the six balls exploded under the impact of six spears of light. How the soldiers wandered on the roof, seeing their projectiles explode in mid-flight. Other spears rushed over them and pierced all the cannons, causing them, too, to explode. Hearing several detonations on the roof, Zoro wanted to know. What is happening, Rainer? Suddenly rejoices Lucy, recognizing her attack. As for him, continuing to stare at the silhouette in the sky, Morgan felt a pearl of sweat run down his forehead while he identified the fallen angel who had just detonated the cannonballs. Seeing her, too, several soldiers began to back away. But, it's, an angel, it's she's a heaven sent. Ascending then, Rainer ends up landing not far from Luffy and the others. He recognized Zoro. Where were you Kobe asked her. 
Preparing to speak, the fallen angel was silent, hearing Lucy say to her. Thank you for what you just did, Ray Chan. Ray Chan, she wondered. Don't call me Ray. Ordered the fallen angel. Then pouting, she said, in a sinister tone. And I didn't do that to save you or something like that I just stopped the cannonballs, afraid that they would hit our boat and my treasure. Despite her selfish words, the look Lucy gave her made her realize that she didn't believe a word of it. Before any of them could say anything, however, Morgan exclaimed. You damn winged monster, you're going to pay me. I'm going to slaughter you. However, a fist eventually touched his jaw and made him back away. You ragged Morgan, seeing Luffy stand in front of him. I forbid you to insult any of my friends of monsters. Taught him the pirate. Or even touch any member of my precious crew. Mujiwara Rainer wondered. Haha, and what are you planning to do? Mujiwara sneered Morgan, taking off his coat so he could fight better. Stop you assured him the pirate. I'll make sure you can't hurt anyone anymore. Let it be Zoro, Lucy, Kobe and Rainer as well as Eraser, Hermip and the others people on this island, I'll never let you take it out on them again. Immediately losing his smile, Morgan ends up running towards him, axe forward. Build I, you brat. What followed was a series of blows, some as powerful as the others. Relying on his brute force, Morgan sliced everything within his reach, while Luffy used his agility to avoid his attacks and counterattack. After a few moments, starting to run out in front of the straw hat, Morgan turned to his men. What are you doing, you asshole put his friends at stake use them as hostages. What said the soldiers? Do you want two to die Morgan questioned them, glaring at them. Then they began to swallow, and several of them started targeting Zoro and the others, who were now too far from Luffy for him to protect them. Noticing this, Morgan looked at one of the members of the small group before ordering. You two, Herma put them on. But to add, you began the man, trembling. Do it after that, maybe I can start considering you as a member of my family. You might even have the opportunity to impress me. Either way, if you don't, you know what will happen to you. Grinding teeth, Herma clenched his fist. Then, finally, wrapping his arm around Kobe's throat, he pointed a revolver on his skull before shouting. Ujiwara, step back immediately. Otherwise, I blow his brains out. Seeing him do it, Luffy froze for a few moments, then ended up asking him. Are you sure of your choice, Herma? No. Confessed the man, starting to sob. I just know he will kill me if I don't do what I tell him. Very well. Cried Morgan, lowering his arm. Pull. With his finger on the trigger, his soldiers prepared to execute themselves when they could hear. Stop. How everyone was surprised, both soldier and pirate. Hand on his aching chest, while a bandage now covered his wound, Eraser was the person who had just spoken. Assisted by Capricorn, the man had managed to leave the room and was now in the courtyard. Staring at his men, he ordered. Lower your weapons immediately. But, Sergeant began a soldier. Are you really so stupid? Noticed the man. Don't you see that Morgan is losing? We have been waiting for this opportunity for a long time, that of bringing this tyrant to his knees, and today, that day has arrived don't help him to win against this pirate on the contrary, we have to help Mujiwara to overcome the real threat of this island. For our lives, as well as those of our families. Then ceasing to target the pirates, each of the soldiers looked at each other, not really knowing what to do. Band of idiots I ordered you to shoot. Raged Morgan. Do nothing. Eraser ordered. Let's just show that we always know what real justice is it's at you to decide. But do you really appreciate what we are doing right now? Do you think that should be the Navy's justice? Looking at him for a few moments, several soldiers finally lowered their heads before shaking their heads. Then, one by one, they threw their weapons on the ground, showing their support for Eraser. Noting this, Morgan immediately rushed towards Luffy while ordering. Irma pulled this kid with glasses hostage and make sure that Mujiwara cannot reply. Suddenly grabbing the blade of his axe, using both hands, Luffy tried to stop his run. So that way, you don't even have enough honor to fight loyally asked the pirate. All that matters is the result of the match. Assured Morgan. And I would advise you not to move if you don't want your friend to die. No risk. Retorted Luffy, smiling. And you know why because I am convinced that Hermit will never shoot, huh? Said Morgan, looking up. Then seeing his son, he noticed that he was still holding Kobe, but that he was having a hard time deciding what to do. What are you waiting, fool show this pirate that you are serious. But I I stammered Hermip. DSSS. Said Raynor, creating a spear. You always have to do everything here I'm going to kill him. However, to her surprise, she suddenly saw Lucy advancing towards the man. Lucy, don't come near. Hermip ordered, pointing his gun at her. Continuing to move forward, the magician suddenly grabbed his weapon without tearing it from his hands before taking another step towards him. Then, being quite close to his face, she ends up slapping him a second time. This time, feeling pain, Hermip released Kobe to put his hand on his cheek. Leave your weapon, Hermip. She ordered him, well the gun could now kill her, given the direction the cannon was pointing. Compared to your father, I know you don't want to be a murderer, but if I don't, I, you want to impress him, right? 
in this case, show him which side you really are in and what you are worth here, and now, I leave you the choice, either you decide to continue to stand like a coward in the shadow of your father, or you decide to join the ranks of the real navy and that you help procreate real justice, it's up to you to see what you want. In any case, I will be there to help you, and I will never use you like a pawn yes, as a friend, I promise you, cried and repeated the man, as if this word was not part of his vocabulary. Hermip, do what I tell you. Morgan ordered him. Nevertheless, he gave up hope, seeing his son finally drop his weapon, before kneeling. Then, his cheeks covered with tears, he looked at him one last time, before declaring. I can't longer consider you my father, you traitor. Suddenly cried two voices. Leaving the rubble that surrounded them, Greedo and Greedy suddenly started running towards Zoro and the others, pointing their weapons at them. Don't worry, Colonel Morgan we. Gretoy brothers, we are going to get rid of all these parasites. Wonderful hurry to kill them all. Sneered Morgan, focusing on his fight with Luffy. However, nothing he imagined went as planned. First, shooting several bullets, Greedy saw them disintegrate by Raynor's spears, which eventually exploded by touching him, throwing him into the air. Then, thinking he was too exhausted to reply, Greedo had the audacity to attack Zoro. Handling his sabers to perfection, Zoro destroys his sabers and sliced the man from all sides, before sending him into the air, using a tornado of air. Finally, while the two brothers found themselves next to each other in the sky, Capricorn managed to jump and find themselves just above them, before hitting them, both, at the level of their skulls. Unable to reply, they fired towards the ground and two craters formed at the level of the impact. Needless to say, they had been knocked out for good. Impossible. Cried Morgan. Suddenly hearing cracks coming from his axe, he noticed that Luffy had increased the pressure he was exerting on it. Impossible repeated the man, trying to back away. Too late. Suddenly breaking his weapon, Luffy then swung his two arms back before declaring. This one is for destroying Kobe's dreams. Gum gum, Hurst, Nujiwara, Azuka, let me know in the comments below if you guys want the next part. Also check out my other video that has been shown and left. Thank you for watching, if you enjoyed this video please like and share this video. And have a fantastic day bye.